Hey, we're hey, we're back again with our marathon of baking and having fun in the kitchen. I am going to do one of my favorite, favorite candy recipes. It was given to me by Eileen McKinney, and I've known Eileen for many, many years. We moved out to California years ago and met Eileen and her family with all the girls and it was a lot of fun. But Eileen made a wonderful toffee recipe. Very easy. I'm gonna change it up a little bit because I'm not gonna put the chopped nuts in it. I'm gonna have the nuts underneath. But we're gonna start off with um, a cup of butter and we're gonna put it in a saucepan. As you can see, my saucepan, my pans are, are a little well warm, but that's okay. And we're gonna turn this on here. And we're gonna turn it on medium um, and get it going. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna use for this recipe is a candy thermometer. And some people, you know, do it with the, the hard ball stage, the soft ball stage. I like the candy thermometer just because it gives me the exact temperature. And I'm gonna to wanna to take this up to 300 degrees. Let me get this down though, and I'll put the rest of the things in that I need to do. So we've got a cup of butter in here already. Um, on this, I use salted butter. Um, I am going to put one cup of sugar in here, and we're, we're melting the butter and we're getting that sugar incorporated in there. And then, as soon as we get this melted down a little bit, I am going to add three tablespoons of water. And it may take a couple minutes to get this up, but I'll go ahead and talk to you about what else I have for this. I used to go to several cooking classes, and one of them was in Louisiana. And the instructor's name was Kay, and we absolutely loved it. So when we were, Eileen, and we all moved to Lafayette, Louisiana. So um, Jolene Roseloff and I used to go to Baton Rouge for cooking classes. Of course, it was a wonderful time. We had a great time, and, and Kay did the same type of thing. I did about a cup and a half of pecans. Now, this is a buttered tray, cookie tray, small, it's nine by 13 and a half. I buttered it really, really well because you don't want the toffee to stick, it will do that. I always put foil down, the foil helps me with cleanup. So we still got this butter melting here and the sugar is getting nice and soft. It reminds me of fallen snow. We don't have fallen snow here today, but we do have some rain and it's very damp outside, the lake is high and a uh, good, good time to do some baking and cookie making. So remember what I told you, we're going to get it up to 300 degrees. So I'm gonna get this out. This one's a nice um, cookie thermometer. It's called a True Temp. I like it, I've had it for a few years. I've had a few others too, but this is one of the better ones. We also have several other thermometers that we use when we fry a turkey or when we, you know, we have meat thermometers when we do our do the tenderloin. We'll be doing three different Christmases this year, so it should be a lot of fun. We're gonna be doing prime rib and tenderloin and turkey and um, what else do we have? Oh, ham. So we've got, we've got three different dinners going. So we're getting this, the butter's melting. It's going. The tenderloin recipe that I'm gonna do is on my food blog, and it is absolutely wonderful. This is on the food blog too. It's gonna to be a little bit different though. It's gonna tell you to chop the pecans and put the pecans in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add that three tablespoons of water in there. When you're working with sugars on the stove top, you've got to be very careful. Sugars can burn very quickly. The other thing you've got to be careful about is sugar, the heat is so intense that you can get burned quickly and badly. So you wanna make sure that you take precautions. I've got some new mitts right there that I'll use. Still trying to get this butter melted. It was very cold when I took it out of the refrigerator. Now on this side over here, I have chocolate chips. 
I am using, in this recipe today, I want more sweetness, so I am using milk chocolate. Um, sometimes it just depends on my, my mood. I'll use um, semi-sweet. Um, you can also change this up by using white chocolate and also doing uh, peppermint. So you've got a white chocolate peppermint bark. It's kind of fun. So let's get this thermometer in here. I know we're not up to temp yet. Let's see what we've got. Okay, it's coming up. So we're set 175. And you gotta make sure you continually stir. You do not want the, the mixture to stick. We're headed up there fast. We are almost to 200. We are now passing 200. A little bit further to go. Keep mixing this. sort of stuck at 200. I don't know if you can see the mixture, it's all nice and bubbly. Okay, we're past, we're about 210. So I went out this morning with our dog, Chloe, and had a great walk. It was chilly, I had to bundle up, wear three jackets, leggings, and right now I've got socks and house shoes on and the fire going in the other room. So I'm gonna take my tea in there after I finish this and enjoy the Hallmark Channel for a little while. All right, we're still, we're at 2.25. So if you see in the background, we've got about 88 of Grandma Jane's snowballs. We've got seven packages of, <coughs> excuse me, seven packages of biscotti. We've got, we gotta make a couple more batches of the white chocolate cranberry. They were so delicious, they're already all gone. We've got to do some chocolate chip. We've got to finish up on our truffles that are still chilling. It's so cool outside, I put them on the table out there to chill. All right, we have, we're at 2.30 right now. This is a slow process. We used to have a lot of fun with the McKinney's. Their girls are all grown up and they're all married with the exception of Allie, who's a doctor and Allie's had a very exciting life. She's been working in Africa and doing all kinds of wonderful things, and we're very proud of her. We're very proud of all of them. They're great kids. Eileen and Bill lived in Asia for quite a while, and now they are back living in the Austin area. We're almost there, we're at 250, so we've got 50 more degrees. We've gotta hit 300. If you don't hit 300, it's not gonna come out right. It smells good though. I think we might make some pralines later. Pralines, I, it, I find they're, they're difficult sometimes because of the weather. I love making pralines. My friend Libby has a wonderful microwave praline recipe, but every time I've tried it recently, 
Um, I think it has to do with the dampness that we have here, although we're just about the same as New Orleans, Libby's in New Orleans, but I think it's just about the same. I don't know why it doesn't come out perfectly, but I love pralines. All right, so you can tell by the consistency of this mixture that it's getting to temperature. So we're, we're still moving up. There we go. Just has such a wonderful, wonderful aroma. Now the constant mixture, mixing like this, adds air to the mixture. But this mixture becomes quite thick. Let's see, what are we at? Almost 375. I'm gonna stop the video right now. Now you see how this has changed colors. It took another, about another three minutes or so to get it to this, this color and temperature. We're going to take our mitts here and we are going to quickly pour the mixture over the pecans like this. You can see that color. There we go. Now, the key to this is to take the chocolate very quickly and get the chocolate spread on top. So you're gonna pour the chocolate chips, and as I said, I used on this um, uh, milk chocolate chips, and so I try to distribute that chocolate all over there. Now the chocolate, because of the heat, is melting pretty quickly. And some, some people like more chocolate than I have. Um, so you're gonna take this and it is, the chocolate chips are starting to melt. So you're going to be spreading the chocolate chips over the top. And I do believe that I'm gonna add some more chocolate chips. I'm using Giardelli. So instead of just the one cup, I think a little, about a one and a quarter cup. It'll take a little while for those chocolate chips to melt, but you're gonna to wanna to get them nice and spread on there. And so when I'm done, I'll show you some of the finished product.